We are so excited, everybody here. I don't know what Pastor John is talking to us about. Kila mbacho mtumishi John anatufundisha. Is the really thing that the church need to know. Ni mafundisho halisi ambal kanisa ntaka tukaweza kujua. As the, as the days of our Lord draws nigh, the enemy Adui. is trying to pollute the destiny of the church. But not for, the, for sure. Lakini, we are existing to make a difference. Tuko hapa out of and we shall never be corrupted. Na hatuta aribiwa. And that's why this information is so important for all of us. Dio kwa sababu tarifa hini ya maana sana kwetu sisi. I can't wait for so long. Sita ngojea tena. I want us to stand up and receive Pastor John to keep us. Tusimame wote tukampuke mtumishu wa mungu. Mchungaji John. Na mkalimani wake. Shangilia bwana kwa makofi. Mchungaji anapo chukua nafasi. Amen. Praise the Lord. You may be seated. Well, we are talking about how to keep the river pure and wait for Jesus to return. Tunazungumzia namna ya kuhifadhi usafi wa mto hadi kurudi kwa Yesu kwa mara ya pili. These things may feel negative, not positive. Mambo haya yanaweza kufanya uhisi, kushushika na si kuinuka. But as you will see in the word, this is part of the last days as well. Lakini utakapoona katika neno la Mungu, hii pia ni moja ya sehemu before Jesus returns there will be earthquakes and fires and tsunami pestilences like COVID this is all a part of the last days but the greatest thing we must watch out for is false teachers and false prophets. If you open your Bibles again to the book of Acts, we're going to continue our journey. In Acts chapter 8, we see the Holy Spirit moving through Philip. The blind, are, the blind, there's great joy and the Holy Spirit is being poured out. But right alongside you try to mix with what God is doing. But the apostles did not allow him to buy the gift of God. I was raised a Roman Catholic church. And we love our Catholic friends. But I was taught growing up that if you commit a sin, you have to do penance to cover your sin. And one of the ways that you could do penance was to make an offering to the church and they would forgive your sins in exchange for the offering. And but Jesus paid the price for all of our sin. 
We do not give our money to the Lord so we can get a healing or get a prophecy or get a blessing. Na hatutoi pesa zetu kwa Mungu ili tupate uponyaji, unabii ama hata kubarikiwa. Jesus paid for every blessing. Yesu alilipia gharama ya kila baraka wa ndugu. We receive them with faith. Tunapokea kwa imani. And then we bring our thanksgiving offering to them. Alafu tunaleta sadaka zetu za shukurani na ibada kwa Bwana. Amen. Amen. After this experience with Simon the sorcerer, baada ya matukio hii ya mchawi Simeoni, in Acts chapter 9 we see that the apostle Paul is saved. Na tunaona matendo ya mitume 9 mtume Paulo anaokoka. And in Acts chapter 10 the Holy Spirit is poured out on the Gentiles. Na matendo ya mitume 10 Roma takatifu anamiminwa kwa watu wa mataifa ambayo sio wayahudi. But what happens after this? Lakini matukio yapi yanayofuatia hii? A great persecution comes against the church again. Na kukakuja na mateso na fiki dhidi ya kanisa tena. And James the, the James the brother of our Lord who was the leader of the church in Jerusalem is killed. Na Yakobo ambaye ni ndugu wa Bwana wetu Yesu Kristo ambaye alikuwa kiongozi wa kanisa pale Yerusalemu akauawa. The people were grieving. Na watu walikuwa naomboleza na kuhuzunika. And then Herod said we're going to stamp out the Christians. Na Herod akasema tutakanyangilia na kuanyamazisha wa Kristo. And he arrested Peter. Na akamshika Petro akamweka korokoroni. And put him in prison. Akamweka korokoroni. And was going to execute him the next day. Na ilikuwa anyongwe siku inayofuatia. But the church began to pray. Lakini kanisa likaanza kuomba. And the Holy Spirit sent an angel. Na Roho Mtakatifu akatuma malaika usiku ule who set Peter free ambayo alikomboa Petro and opened the door of the prison na akafungua malango ya korokoro and led him out na akamuongoza awe huru and he was delivered na Petro akakombolewa kwa utukufu wa Bwana hallelujah hallelujah satan may try to extinguish you Shetani anaweza ijaribu kukuzima na kukupoesha but keep praying lakini endelea kuomba keep believing god endelea kumtumaini ya Bwana even though james was dead hata kama yakobo ameuawa satan didn't get the final word shetani hakufaulu hatimaye hallelujah hallelujah then we come to acts chapter 12 and, and 13 basi tunakuja katika matendo ya mitume 12 na 13 and the apostle paul is now in antioch preaching the word as a prophet na sasa tunaona paulo akihubiri katika mji wa antiochia kama nabii and it says that in the antioch church there were prophets and teachers na nasema katika kanisa la antiochia kulikuwa na walimu na manabii as the ministers began to worship the lord and fast na wakati hawa walimu na manabii walikuwa kumhudumia bwana kwa kufunga saumu the holy spirit spoke to them Rome, said this to me to Rome, the work i've called them rom takatifu akawazungumzia akasema nitengeeni barnaba na paulo kwa kazi ambayo nimewaitia so they laid their hands on them and sent them out kwa hivyo wakawawekea mikono na wakawatia wakfu na wakawatuma Paul and Barnabas get on a ship and they sail to the island of Crete. Na Paulo na Barnaba wakaingia katika meli kuelekea katika um, ziwa la Crete. It's a very long island in the Mediterranean Sea. Ni uh, kisiwa kikubwa katika maji ya Mediterranean. And they begin preaching the word through the island of Crete. Na wakaanza kuhubiri katika kile kisiwa ya Crete. And finally, baadaye, they come to a city called uh, Paphos. Na wakaja kwa mji ambaye inaitwa Pamphylia. And they begin preaching the word of God. Na wakaanza kuhubiri neno la Mungu. And notice in Acts 13 and verse 6. Katika matendo ya mitume 13 na mstari wa 6. So read verse 6, uh, 7 and 8. Yes sir. Walipokwisha kupita matendo ya mitume 13 mstari wa 6 7 na 8. Walipokwisha kupita katikati ya kisiwa chote mpaka Pafo, wakaona mtu mmoja mchawi nabii wa uongo, Mwayahudi jina lake Bar Yesu. 
Mtu huyu alikuwa pamoja na liwali Sergio Paulo, mtu mwenye akili. Yeye liwali akaita Barnaba na Sauli waje kwake. Akataka kulisikia neno la Mungu. Msari wa nane. Lakini Elima yule mchawi. Maana ndio tafsiri ya jina lake. Akashindana nao akitaka kumtum, kumtia yule liwali moyo wa kuiacha ile imani. The Holy Spirit was moving. Roho Mtakatifu alikuwa anafanya kazi wa ndugu. The governor of the island was wanting to hear the gospel. Na yule msimamizi wa pamphlia alitaka kusikia na kupokea neno. But Satan had someone planted right next to him. Lakini shetani alikuwa amepanda mtu kando yake. Bar Jesus or Elimus. Ambaye anaitwa Elimus. Who was sorcerer. Ambaye alikuwa ni mchawi false prophet alikuwa nabii wa uongo and he would whisper in the ear of the governor na akawa anamnogenezea huyu mkubwa these men you cannot listen to them you must turn away from this preaching hawa wajamaa usiwape nafasi kuwasikiza wafukuzwe watolewe hapa it says that elimus withstood them stood against them inasema uh, biblia inasema elim akawapinga akawazuia akawafungia You remember in the Old Testament the story of uh, Esther and Haman. Unakumbuka katika agano la kale hadithi ya Esther na Haman. Esther was married to the king. Esther alikuwa ameolewa kwa mfalme. She was a woman of God. Alikuwa ni mtumishi wa Mungu. The king's right hand man. Lakini mtu wa karibu wa mfalme alikuwa jina lake Haman. And he wanted to kill God's people. Na huyu mtu alikuwa na mbinu ya kuangamiza watu wa Mungu. The story of Esther is the story of a battle in the government for the for whether the people of God would be blessed or cursed. Na hadithi ya Esther ilikuwa ni vita katika ikulu watu wa Mungu waangamizwe ama wabarikiwe. Ilikuwa ni vita ya hatima ya wateule. We see in this passage that Satan works in highest levels of government. Na tunaona katika maeneo haya shetani anafanya kazi katika idara kuu ya utawala wa nchi. And the reason for this is because if Satan can get a hold of those who lead in the government to a whole nation. Na njia na mbinu excuse me. Huyu mhubiri anajaribu kusema shetani hujipanda na kujinasia watu ambayo waka katika ushawishi na utawala mkubwa kwa sababu akishika uongozi wa taifa makusudi ya Mungu yanaweza kusuiwa hasa kuhubiri neno la Mungu That's why we must pray for people in authority. Hii ndio sababu lazima tuombe watu walie katika utawala na mamlaka, viongozi wa kisiasa, especially the ones that are not Christians. Hasa wale ambao ni wa Kristo. Because Satan will try to get them to be corrupted. Sorry, hasa wale ambao si wa Kristo, kwa maana wale ambao si wa Kristo, shetani anawanasa kwa njia ya urahisi. But the Bible says that when Saul saw that Elymas was opposing them, he addressed the demonic spirit. Lakini Paulo alipoona kwamba Elima anajaribu kuwazuia, akazungumzia yule roho mchafu. Read verses 9 through 12. Mstari matendo ya mitume 13 mstari wa 9 hadi 12. Biblia inasema hivi, lakini Sauli ambaye ndiye Paulo Akijaro mtakatifu akamkazia macho akasema ewe mwenye kujaa hila na uovu wote mwana wa ibilisi adui wa haki yote huachi kuzipotoa njia za Bwana zilizonyooka basi angalia mkono wa Bwana u juu yako nawe utakuwa kipofu usilione jua kwa muda mara kiwi kikamwangukia na giza akazunguka zunguka na kumtafuta mtu wa kumshika mkono na kumuongoza mstari wa 12 ndipo yule liwali alipoyaona yaliyotendeka akaamini akastajabia mafundisho ya Bwana when you see satan at work in government bind his power in the name of jesus kiona shetani anafanya kazi katika ofisi za serikali ifunge kwa jina la Yesu command the lying spirits to be blinded 
Haamuru roho za upofu si wafunge macho wazione na kuzuia makusudi ya Mungu. We have more power in the name of Jesus the servants of Satan have. Tuna nguvu katika jina la Yesu kuliko wale watumishi wa shetani. Paul, his, uh, Paul finished his journey and then went on a second missionary journey. Paulo akamaliza safari yake ya kwanza akaenda safari ya pili ya msururu wa kimishenari. In Acts chapter 16. Katika matendo ya mitume 16. Paul and Silas are traveling together. Paulo na Sila wakatembea kule Debe. And the Holy Spirit speak to them. Na Roho Mtakatifu akawazungumzia to come to Macedonia. Warudi katika mji wa Makedonia. This is modern day Greece. Hii ni nchi ya Greece ya sasa, taifa la Greece. Greece sasa. So they sail from Troas to Greece. Na wakatoka pale Troas na wakarudi katika mji wa Greek. And they went to the largest city in the area. Na wakaenda katika mji mkubwa katika maeneo hayo. The city of Philippi was founded by Philip of Macedon who was the father of Alexander the Great. Mji wa Philip, Philippi ilianzishwa na yule mzee wa anaitwa Philip ambaye ni baba yake ya Alexander the Great. And in the time of the apostle Paul, the Roman government was flooding it with money to build it up as a great Roman city. Na wakati wa mtume Paulo taifa la Kirumi na utawala wa Kirumi walikuwa na mwaga pesa pale kuijenga mji wa Philippi kama mji wa muhimu katika utawala wa Kirumi. When Paul and Silas begin preaching the gospel, a, a woman gets saved, a very wealthy woman named Lydia. Na wakati Paulo alikuwa anahubiri mama mmoja mtajiri mkwasi sana akaokoka jina lake Lydia. And she brings her friends to listen to, to Paul. Na akaleta marafiki wafanyibiashara wenzake kusikiza huduma na ujumbe wa Paulo. The river where Paul baptized her, you can still see it. I have been there in uh, in Greece. You can still see the river. Na mto ule ambaye Paulo alimbatiza bado iko hadi wa leo unaweza kuiona katika mji wa katika taifa la sasa la Greece. And then the Holy Spirit started to move. Na Roho Mtakatifu akaanza kufanya kazi na kuenea. Paul and Silas are preaching the gospel. Paulo na Sila wanahubiri injili. But Satan comes along. Na shetani akanyemelea kama kawaida. Read verse 16 and 17. Acts 16, 16 and 17. Matendo ya mitume 16 mstari wa 16 na 17. Ikawa tulipokuwa tukienda mahali pale pa kusali kijakazi mmoja aliyekuwa na pepo wa uaguzi akatukuta aka alie aliyewapatia bwana zake faida nyingi kwa kuagua akafuata paulo na sisi akipiga kelele akisema watu hawa ni watumishi wa mungu aliye juu wenye kuahubiria njia ya wokovu i want you to notice this is very important Ningependa muelewe hii kwa sababu ni ya muhimu sana. What was she saying? Yeye alikuwa anasema nini? Was she saying the truth? Je, huyu msichana alikuwa anasema ukweli? These men are servants of the most high God. Ha, hawa watu ni watumishi wa Mungu. They proclaim the way of salvation. Wanasifunza njia ya wokovu. But it was coming from a false spirit. Lakini ilikuwa inatoka kwa roho chafu. Satan tries to counterfeit to make something very close to the real. Shetani anajaribu kuiga kuleta kitu ya bandia ambayo kinafanana na ile ya asili kabisa. Everywhere Paul went this woman followed them and said these are the servants of the most high God proclaiming the way of salvation these are the servants of the most high God proclaiming the way of salvation and the bible says she did it for many days Na huyu msichana aliendelea kusema nyuma ya Paulo hawani watumishi wa Mungu na akasema hivyo kwa siku mingi sana If you had been there you might have said well what true 
na kama labda wewe ulikuwa Paulo ungesema huyu ananisaidia watu anipokee but it was coming from a false and distracting spirit lakini ilikuwa ni mbinu ambayo inazungumza ukweli kwa nia ya kupofusha watu did you know that there are not only holy spirit tongues but demonic tongues as well wandugu na waulizeni hivi. Demon possessed people can speak in tongues as well. Excuse me. Muhubiri huyu anauliza. Anasema je wewe unajua sio kila mtu anazungumza ndimi, anazungumza ndimi za Roho Mtakatifu. Hata watu waliyepagawa na mapepo wanaweza zungumza ndimi za kiroho lakini sio Roho Mtakatifu. One time I was praying for a woman and she began to cry out in tongues. Siku moja nilikuwa naombea mwanamke fulani na akaanza kuongea kwa sauti kubwa kwa ndimi. At first I rejoiced. Ya kwanza nikafurahi amejazwa na roho. There was something about the tongues. Lakini nilipoendelea kusikiza hizo roho nikasema they had an agitating spirit to it. It agitated me. Nikasikia kuna kitu hapa kule ndani kuna kitu haishikanishi. Instead of being sweet it felt harsh. Na nikasikia badala ya kunijenga inanikata kule ndani. Inanikwaza. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said that's a false tongue. Na Roho Mtakatifu akaniambia hizi ni ndimi lakini ni ndimi za uongo. She needs to be delivered. Anafaa kukombolewa ndimi za uongo huyu. So I said to the excuse me Nikamwambia huyo mama subiri kidogo nisikize naomba umakini wako. But have you ever been involved with fortune tellers? Lakini excuse or witchcraft? Muhubiri huyu excuse me pastor. Muhubiri huyu aliposikia huyo mama akizungumza kwa ndimi akajua hizi si ndimi za Roho Mtakatifu akasema dada nyamaza kidogo. Je wewe umewahi enda kwa mganga ama kwa mchawi? She was a Christian woman. Alikuwa ni mama mkristo. But she had gone to fortune tellers. Lakini, psychics we call them psychics. Alienda kwa wale watu ambao ni waaguzi wanaosama viganja vya mikono watabiri. And these they had the power of God to talk to the dead. Na wale waaguzi wakamwambia wana nguvu za Mungu ya kuzungumza na wafu. And these psychics had they had a cross of Jesus when you walk in and a, a rosary and they talked about Mary the mother of Jesus Now aguzi walikuwa na msalaba ukiingia katika ile madhabahu yao na pia kulikuwa na, na rosari na kuzungumza na Maria And then they would tell her what her dead relatives were thinking Na anaanza kuambia huyu mama kile ndugu zake waliofariki wanawaza na kuwazua She thought it was the power of God. Na huyu mama akadanganyika akapumbazika akadhani eh hey, hawa watu wanaweza ongea na wafu watu wana nguvu za Mungu hawa. But she opened her door to the devil. Na sasa akafungulia mapepo na shetani nafasi katika moyo wake. There is a difference between prophecy and psychic activity occult activity mm-hmm. kuna tofauti kubwa kubwa sana wa ndugu ya unabii wa Mungu na uaguzi na kuelezea mtu mambo ya rohoni but psychics in america will often say that they're christian lakini hawa waaguzi katika nchi ya marekani mara mingi wanasema wao ni wa dini ya kikristo So I told her to repent of this and she did and then I commanded the spirit to leave her na and nika, it did it left her Na nikaambia huyu mama atubu na nikamwambia hizi roho zimwachilie Kwa maneno mengi Pastor John just a minute Yeah Huyu hao watu wenye mhubiri huyu anawaita psychics ni wale watu tunawaita wasali huku exactly wasali wewe si mnajua wasali ndio kule wa Marekani sababu wamesoma wanaitwa hivyo When the demon left her she, be, she was filled with the real Holy Spirit and began to speak in tongues Na wakati hizi roho zilimwacha aka Yesu na Roho Mtakatifu akaanza kuzungumza kwa ndimi za kweli And these tongues were sweet 
na hizi ndimi zinajenga worship tamu ni ibada takatifu you could feel the difference unaweza kuhisi utofauti so this girl is saying the right thing behind the apostle paul but was the wrong spirit na huyu msichana anasema kitu ya ukweli nyuma ya paulo lakini alikuwa anatumia roho chafu finally after many days the holy spirit speaks to paul and tells him this is a false spirit na baada ya siku nyingi roho mtakatifu akamwambia paulo hii ni roho ya kigeni so paul turns around and commands the spirit to leave her in the name of Jesus. Na Paulo akageuka na akakemea zile roho na zikatoka kwa yule msichana kwa jina la Yesu. And the demon leaves her. Na mapepo ikamwacha. And she becomes saved. Na akarudi akawa mtu wa kawaida, timamu. And baptized. Na akabatizwa. Isn't that wonderful? Sio ni ajabu wa ndugu. Guess what happened? Hebu jaribu kutafakari aliyofuatia. The people who were making money off of her gift got angry and arrested Paul and Silas. Watu waliokuwa wanafanya biashara ya mapato ya usalii kwa sababu yake wakamshika Paulo wakasema umekatisa biashara yetu. Utalala ndani ndugu. The Bible says they were beaten with rods. Biblia inasema wakachapwa na mijereti. In those days that word means usually they would take iron bars they put their feet in stocks and beat their feet until they broke their feet na mara mingi neno hilo walitumia chuma na kile kingefanyika kwa sababu miguu yako umefungwa na minyororo wanapiga zile minyororo na chuma mpaka minyororo hiyo ikukate miguu then they were put in prison na wakawekwa korokoroni they're hurting they're in pain na wanaumia wanavuja damu wana uchungu it looks like satan had won but at midnight paul and silas began to sing and praise the lord ukiangalia kiasili ni kama shetani amefaulu lakini usiku wa manane paulo akaanza sila wakaanza kumsifu bwana the holy spirit shakes the prison na roho mtakatifu akatingiza ile jela and they were set free na wakawekwa huru na wakapona vinonda yao when you do the right thing satan will often attack you ukifanya kitu iliyo sawia shetani atakuvamia atakupinga especially when you go after demonic spirits and the occult asa ukianza kukabiliana na maroza usalii maroza kiganga na kimapepo dini ya kishetani shetani sometimes we do the right thing and the devil hits us back na mara mingi tunafanya kitu iliyo sawia na mapepo inatushambulia kwa, ba, kwa badala yake but even if you feel defeated even if you're in prison even if it looks like all hope is lost praise the name of the lord lakini hata ukiwa korokoroni na umetenda wema usiwache kumsifu bwana he can shake the trap of satan anaweza tingiza minyororo na korokoro za shetani na uwe huru hallelujah hallelujah this is a pattern we continue to see and i won't go into it. i could show you other stories but paul went to a let me just say this Then Paul went on a third missionary journey. Na Paulo akaenda katika safari ya tatu ya msururu wa kimishonari. In this time the apostle Paul went to the chief city of Asia Minor called Ephesus. Na sasa hivi Paulo akaenda katika mji mkuu wa Asia Minor ambayo inaitwa mji wa Efeso. You can read all about it in Acts chapter 19. Na unaweza soma hiyo yote katika matendo ya mitume 19. The apostle Paul preaches to the men that are there. Na Paulo akahubiri kwa wanaume waliokuwa hapo. He baptizes them in water. Na akawabatiza na maji. And they are baptized in the Holy Spirit. Na wanabatizwa na Roho Mtakatifu. And the Spirit of God begins to move. Na Roho Mtakatifu akaanza safari. Paul stayed in Ephesus for three years. Na Paulo akadumu katika mji wa Efeso kwa miaka mitatu. 
It was the last church that Paul planted and he stayed there the longest. Na ilikuwa ni kanisa ya mwisho Paulo alipanda na alidumu hapo muda mrefu kuliko sehemu zozote alizofanya huduma. Every morning the apostle Paul would work with his hands to provide a living for himself. Kila asubuhi Paulo angafanya kazi na mikono yake kukimu mahitaji yake. And then he would go and preach the gospel every day. Na angeenda ubiri injili kila siku. And people started coming. Na watu wakaanza kuja. More and more and more. Watu wakaanza kuja wengi na wengi na wengi na wengi. The city of Ephesus was dedicated to a goddess named Artemis. Na um, mji wa Efeso ilipeano kwa Mungu ambaye anaitwa Artemis. I have been there numerous times. Nimekuwa katika mji wa Efeso muda mingi. The very streets the apostle Paul walked on are now exposed. You can see them. They've excavated. Mhm. Mabarabara yenye Paulo alipitia yamechimbuliwa unaweza kuona mapito yale ya kale. The power of God began to move through the ministry of Paul so greatly that signs and wonders began to occur. Na ishara na miujiza ikaanza kufuata huduma ya mtumishi wa Mungu Paulo. Miracles began to occur. Na miujiza ikaanza kutendeka. Demons began to leave the people. Na mapepo ikaanza kuachilia watu. The revival was so great that the people stopped going to the temple to buy idols of Artemis. Na ukakoa na nguvu za Mungu zinatembea mpaka biashara ya kuuza na kununua sanamu ikaisha. So many people came to Jesus it affected the the world's economy. Watu wengi walimkujia Yesu mpaka ikati tikiza uchumi ya dunia wakati ule hasa kwa sababu biashara kubwa ilikuwa ni kuuza sanamu i want you to see this in your mind ninataka uwe na taswira hii kwa mawazo yako the remains of the temple of artemis are still there in ephesus hadi wa leo zile mabaki ya hekalu ya artemis bado ipo hadi wa leo ukienda katika mji wa efeso Atemi, atemi. It's one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. Ni moja ya maajabu saba ya ulimwengu wa kale. People came from all over the world to worship Artemis. Watu walitoka kila sehemu kwa dunia yote kuabudu Atemi. The pillars of her temple were so large. Na nguzo za hekalu hiyo zilikuwa kubwa kiasi ya kwamba. And the statue of Artemis was so big. Na sanamu hii ya Artemis ilikuwa kubwa sana. People came from all over the world to see it. Watu walitoka kila sehemu ulimwenguni kuja kuiona. And they would sell the idol makers would sell little idols of Artemis. Na watu wengi walikuwa wanauza tu sanamu ndogo ndogo ya Atemi. Ilikuwa ni biashara vile tunauza nguo sokoni. They have excavated these little idols. I've seen them in Ephesus in the museum. Na wamechimbua chimbua hizo sanamu za kale. Unaweza kuziona. She was a uh, fertility goddess. Alikuwa ni miungu ya kuzalisha. And she had all of these breasts. Na alikuwa na matiti hizi zote. The people would come and they would Can I say this? They would have sex to worship her. To worship her they would have sex with the prostitutes in the temple na watu wangekuja kuabudu hii sanamu na kilele ya ibada hiyo ni kuwa na uhusiano wa kimapenzi na wale makahaba wa madhabahu yale but so many people came to jesus na watu wengi wakaokoka the people stopped going to artemis temple na watu wakaacha kwenda katika hekalu ya atemi ikafungwa That's the power of the Holy Spirit and the Word of God. Na hiyo ndiyo nguvu za Roho Mtakatifu ikivamia mji. Some estimates say between, between the uh, church at Ephesus had between 10 and 20,000 people in it. Watu wanakadiria kwamba kanisa la Efeso lilikuwa na kati ya watu 10,000. So what do you suppose Satan did? Wewe unafikiri shetani sasa haya angeitikia aje? He tried to get in on it. Akajaribu kujipe, kujipenyeza ndani. There were some Jewish exorcists that tried to use the name of Jesus. Kulikuwa na watu fulani walio toa mapepo wa Kiyahudi. But the demon said we don't know you. 
Lakini mapepo ikasema lakini nyinyi nayo atuajui. We know Jesus and we know Paul. Tunajua Yesu kwa hii muji na tunajua Paulo. But who are you? Lakini nyinyi jameni ndio kina nani? And the demons jumped on the on the uh, false exorcists. Na mapepo ikarukia wale wa kutoa mapepo. The Skiva, that's right. Wana saba wa Skiva. Skiva. And chased them away. Na wakawararulia mavazi na wakawafukuza. And even more people came to the church. And then what happens? The idol makers stop the city and they arrest Paul and they want to kill him. And it was by a miracle that Paul escaped. Na ilikuwa tu niki kwa sababu ya miujiza ya Mungu Paulo alikosa kuuawa hiyo siku. Can you see how every time God is working Satan comes alongside? Je, umeona ya kwamba kila wakati Mungu akifanya kazi shetani anajipenyeza ndani? Paul travels to Greece and then on his way to Jerusalem he stops at a city called Miletus. Na Paulo anatembea Greece na katika safari ya kurudi Jerusalem akasimama kwa mji unaoitwa Melito. Miletus was a small city about about um, 50 miles from Ephesus as Ephesus. Na Melito ilikuwa ni kiziwa ndogo kama maili 50 kutoka mji mkuu wa Efeso. It was a vacation spot where people would go to vacation on the Aegean Sea. Ilikuwa ni sehemu ya kwenda kupumzika, ilikuwa ni mahali pa mapumziko. And in Acts chapter 20, na katika matendo ya mitume 20, we find that Paul held the first pastors conference. Na tukaona Paulo akifanya mkutano ya kwanza wa wachungaji. Look at verse 17. Matendo ya mitume 20, 17. Biblia nasema. Read verses uh, yeah, read verse 17. Toka Melito Paulo akatuma watu kwenda Efeso akawaita wazee wa kanisa Paul begins teaching these pastors and I love this because rather than going to Ephesus he called the pastors from their parishes so they could have a time of rest and teaching and refreshing Pastors need to get away sometimes. You need to send your pastors on vacation. Let them go to pastors conferences so they can be refreshed. Na nataka msikize hii wapendwa. Paulo badala ya kuenda kwenye ile mji ya Efeso akawaita katika mahali pa mapumziko pa Melito kwa sababu kila mchungaji anafaa kwenda mahali ambayo hafanyi huduma, anahudumiwa tu na anapumzika. Paul begins by reminding them of his of his ministry among them. Na Paulo akaanza kuwakumbusha huduma aliyofanya katikati yao. He talks about the trials that he's been through. Akazungumza mateso na majaribu aliyokumbana nayo. And in verse 27, he says, I have not shunned to declare to you the whole counsel of God. Msari wa 27 anasema kwa maana sikujiepusha na kuahubiria habari ya kusudi lote la Mungu. This phrase to declare the full counsel na tamko hili kutangaza ushauri lote la Mungu is a nautical term a sailing term and it means to unfurl the sail to fully open the sail so it can capture all the wind Huyu mm-hmm. mhubiri anasema neno hili linatumika watu wakiwa katika bahari na watu wakiwa bahari wanasafiri wanategemea upepo sasa kuna ile ile pasia ama hema likifunguliwa yote kubwa upepo inakuwa mingi na inasukuma ile meli kufika kule inakoenda kwa wakati hivyo ndivyo anamaanisha Paul was saying I spent three years and I preached the whole word of God to you. Paulo anasema nilikaa miaka tatu na nikawafundisha kila kitu inayopaswa nifundishe kwa neno la Mungu. I fully opened the sails. Anasema nilifungua pasia yote na ile hema ya upepo. So we could capture all of the wind of God. Ili tushike kila upepo ambao wa Mungu ambao unaweza kutusukuma. 
And in verse 28, he gives them a warning. Read verse 28, verse 29. Uh, read verse 28 through 31. Matendo wa mitume 20 moja. Jitunzeni nafsi zenu na, na lile kundi lote nalo ambalo Roho Mtakatifu amewaweka ninyi kuwa waangalizi ndani yake mpate kulilisha kanisa lake Mungu alionunua kwa damu yake mwenyewe. Najua mimi ya kuwa baada ya kuondoka kwangu mbwa mwitu wakali wataingia kwenu wasihurumie kundi tena katika katika ninyi wenyewe watainuka watu wakisema mapotofu wakavute hao wanafunzi waka an, waka andamie wao kwa hiyo kesheni mukikumbuka ya kwamba miaka tatu usiku na mchana sikuacha kumuonya kila mtu kwa machozi These were the last words that Paul preached to the church he spent three years pastoring. And he says, I know this. In the Greek, he says, I am certain that this is going to happen. Katika Kigiriki anasema nina hakikisho bila shaka after my departure after I leave baada ya mimi kuondoka two groups will come kuna vikundi viwili vitatu two kinds of people first savage wolves will come from the outside and they will attack the flock and not spare them anasema kundi la kwanza ni umbwa wa mwitu kutoka nje watakuja kuwavamia kutoka nje savage wolves are those who attack us openly attack us who are not christians na hawa ni watu ambao sio wa kristo wanatuvamia kutoka nje ni watu wajitambulishe na imani ya kikristo but we as christians know jesus said we will suffer persecution lakini sisi kama wa kristo tunajua yesu alisema tutakabiliana na mateso but look at the next verse verse 30 lakini angalia mstari wa 30 also tena from among you katikati nyinyi men will rise up kuna watu watainuka with deviant doctrines to lure disciples after themselves watu wakisema mapotofu wa wavuta hao wanafunzi waandamie wao this is the greatest danger hii ndio hatari kubwa sana if somebody is from another cult or religion or opposing us they're savage wolves we just have to stand in the name of jesus kama mtu anatushambulia na si mkristo tunasimama kwa imani kwa ujasiri kwa jina la yesu i can say this right okay where it says from among you men will rise up he's talking about the ephesian elders from among the pastors there will be some pastors who will rise up speaking twisted things to draw disciples after themselves this is more dangerous na hivi ndivyo ilivyo ya kwamba watu wa kutoka nje kazi yao ni rahisi tutasimama kwa imani lakini paulo anasema kati ya nyinyi wachungaji leo ninaowazungumzia watotokea wengine wenu ambayo nia yao ni kuwavuta watu watoke katika Kristo wawafuate hawa wenyewe wasiwe wanafunzi wa Yesu lakini wawe wanafunzi wao as ministers we must be very cautious not to seek followers for ourselves kama waudu malazima tuwe makini ili tusiwe tunajitafutia ufwasi na umaarufu wenyewe kuiba mioyo ya watu kutoka kwa Kristo na kujenga imani yao kwa misingi yetu the sheep do not exist to stroke the egos of the shepherds mm-hmm. Mbili huyo anasema kazi ya washirika si kufurahisha moyo kubwa na kichwa kubwa ya mchungaji but the shepherds exist 
to serve the sheep. Lakini wachungaji wako kuinama na kufikia na kutumikia kondoo. Remember John the Baptist said he must increase I must decrease. Kumbuka Yohana Mbatisaji alisema lazima nipungue na yeye ainuke. If God has given you a gift to reach thousands, praise the Lord. Kama Mungu anakupa kipawa ya kufikia maelfu, jina la Bwana lisifiwe. If God has given you a gift to reach a hundred, praise the Lord. Na kama Bwana anakupa kipawa ya watu 100, jina la Bwana lisifiwe. If you are in a village ministering to 10 people, praise the Lord. Na kama wewe ni mchungaji kule kijijini na unawashirika kumi, jina la Bwana nalipewe sifa. You are not successful in the eyes of God based on how many people follow you. Wewe Mungu haangalii kufaulu kwako kulingana na idadi ya watu ambao wanakufuata. Mungu haangalii kufaulu na macho ya idadi. This is how the world measures success. Hivi ndivyo ulimwengu inakadiria kufaulu. Amen. Amen. We seek for him to increase. Na tunaona wakipanu. This particular passage of scripture strikes my heart. Na andiko hili linachoma moyo wangu. Because Paul was aware that some of the very men and women He had discipled the, oh, the Holy Spirit showed him that they would eventually rise up and turn against him. Paulo alijua baadhi hawa watu ambao amewafunza Roho Mtakatifu amemfunulia watainuka na kupotosha watu. Things have not changed. Mambo hayajabadilika wa ndugu. It is the same today. Mambo ni ule utaratibu wa wakati ule. If Satan can't attack us from the outside with savage wolves. Kama shetani hawezi kutuvamia kutoka nje na umbo mwitu. Then he will whisper inside to the pastors and he'll say you are better than this. You could have your own following. You could be your own man. You need to rise up. Bishop Emmanuel is holding you back. <laughs> basi shetani atakuja anongonezee mawazo ya watu na mwambie wewe uko na mafuta isiyokuwa ya kawaida <laughs> huyu mzee amekukazia hewa muda mrefu wewe pia angalia vile utapanga mambo yako <laughs> this happens and then people launch themselves into the ministry rather than letting the holy spirit launch them na hii ndio ufanyika watu wanajituma kwa huduma badala ya kungoja Roho Mtakatifu awawachilie na watume katika kazi anaoitia If God has spoken to you to start a church or to begin a ministry that is a good thing Kama Mungu amekunenea uanze kanisa ama kuanzisha huduma hiyo ni jambo nzuri But you should go to your pastor or your bishop and ask for his wisdom and blessing and permission. Lakini lazima uende kwa kiongozi wako, uombe ushauri, baraka na hekima yake. Usiamke tu na kutoka ukienda ukiendanga. Paul was called to bring the gospel to the nations in Acts chapter 9. Paulo aliitwa kama muhubiri wa kuleta mataifa injili kwa mataifa ya Kiyunani katika matendo ya mitume 9. But in Acts chapter 13 He was still in a local church on a on a pastoral team and he waited for the Holy Spirit to tell the others separate Paul, Paul and Barnabas for the work I've called them yes. and they sent them forth Excuse me pastor Huyu mhubiri anasema hivi Wakati Paulo alikutana na Yesu katika matendo ya mitume 9 Mungu alimuita na tume ya kufikia mataifa mengi lakini kando na hayo Paulo akaenda katika mji wa Antiochia kama mmoja wa wachungaji wale na alisubiri mpaka wale waliokuwa wanafanya kazi pamoja nao kuwa pia na ushawishi ya kwamba Mungu sasa anatoa Paulo katikati yetu sio tu ile sauti ya kwanza ya mtu binafsi lakini wale wachungaji wenzake wakawa na ushuhuda na ushawishi sasa Paulo anaweza wachiliwa After Paul said 
things to the pastors of the church in Ephesus. Hivi ndivyo Paulo akazungumzia mambo haya kwa wachungaji wa Waefeso. He then gives them instructions. Basi na akawapa ushauri verse 31 and 32. Msari wa 31 na 32. Kwa, kwa hiyo kesheni mkikumbuka kwa miaka mitatu usiku na mchana sikuacha kumuonya kila mtu kwa machozi basi sasa nawaweka katika mikono ya Mungu na kwa neno la neema yake ambalo laweza kuwajenga na kuwapa urithi pamoja na wote waliotakaswa Paul said I warned you day and night this would happen Paulo anasema niliwatahadharisha usiku na mchana hii itafanyika what is the solution to this na ni nini suluhu ya hii paul says therefore watch paulo akasema basi kesheni mkiomba give heed to yourselves he says look at your life anasema na mkijichunga wenyewe examine your heart anasema chungeni mioyo yenu we must as pastors and church leaders be watchful lazima kama wachungaji na waangalizi wa kundi la Bwana tuwe makini it seems very sad to hear this but we are living in the days that Jesus said there would be false prophets and false teachers inahusunisha mimi kusema hii lakini tunaishi nyakati ambayo Yesu alisema kutakuwa na manabii na, na walimu wa uongo we have to be watchful lazima tuwe makini When we see someone else of our brother or sister starting to get off we should go to them and lovingly exhort them. Ndikiona mmoja wetu anapotoka tunaenda kwa upendo kwa unyenyekevu na kujaribu kumrudisha katika njia ya ukweli. Jesus said that before he comes the false prophets and teachers will be so many and so powerful that they could even deceive the elect if it were possible. Na Yesu alisema ya kwamba kabla ya kurudi kwake kutakuwa na manabii wa uongo wengi ambao hata watajaribu kupoteza wateule, kupotosha wateule. How do we guard ourselves against these problems? Na je, tunajilinda aje kutokana na manabii wa uongo? We watch. Tunajilinda kwa kuwa makua. We make sure the river is pure kuhakikisha kwamba tumelinda mto ule we don't let somebody pollute upstream haturuhusu mtu kwenda kule kwa chemichemi na kuweka sumu paul is writing to the pastors paulo anaandikia wachungaji and he's saying you must watch over the flock anasema lazima ulinde kundi part of the job of the pastor is to guard the flock sehemu ya kazi ya mchungaji ni kulinda kundi to protect them kuwalinda wao in america today katika taifa la marekani leo it is not popular to preach about satan sio si maarufu maarufu haikubaliki na watu wote kuhubiri juu ya shetani people only want to hear preaching that makes them feel good Watu wanataka kusikiza tu mahubiri na wasisimua na kuwafariji. In many pulpits they will not warn against false doctrines. Katika madhabahu nyingi hawaoni kuhusu mafundisho ya uongo. But my brothers and sisters if we don't watch over the river of the Holy Spirit Lakin, I'm telling you Satan will come in and corrupt it. Lakini wa ndugu tusipochunga mto wa Roho Mtakatifu shetani atapenya na kuinajisi na kuweka sumu. What will protect us from these things? Ni nini itatulinda kutokana na madhara haya? Verse 32 32. Paul says so now I commend you to God and the word of his grace. Paulo anasema basi ninawaweka katika mikono ya Mungu na kwa neno la neema yake which is able to build you up ambayo inaweza kuwajenga and give you an inheritance na kuwapa urithi among those who are sanctified. Pamoja na wateule wote. It's the word of God that will keep you firm ni neno la Mungu litakuweka imara if somebody is preaching something kama mtu anahubiri kitu and it isn't clearly in the word of god na si sawa kwa neno la Mungu or they're using the word of god and twisting it ama wanatumia neno la Mungu na kuigeuza don't follow them usifuate 
Even if they have miracles. Even if they have prophecies. Even if they have healings. We don't follow signs and wonders. We follow Jesus. Amen. 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 I commend you to God. And the word of his grace. Which will build you up. Keep you safe. And give you an inheritance. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. I want to request you to stand on your feet, please. This is not a joke, men of God. Hili si jambo la kufanyia mizaha watumishi wa Mungu. I believe this is a divine instruction from the Holy Spirit. Naamini kwamba haya ni mashauri kutoka kwa Roho Mtakatifu mwenyewe. And the conclusion it's that it. we have to watch and pray. Hatimaye ni kwamba tuweze ku this is a battle between the truth and false but praise be to God who causes us to triumph who gives us victory from our master we want to connect in the spirit realm. We want to pray right now that the enemy will never succeed on what God has begun through your life. I want you to take seriously and move in the realm of prayer that you will walk in and fulfill your destiny. And there is no weapon assigned to work against you and prosper. Men and women of God, this is our hour to raise up our voice and pray because you are called at such a time he will not succeed over your ministry he will not succeed over your church he will not succeed over your family it's our high season to pray now let's get in right now and call upon the name of Jesus come on keep on keep on moving keep on moving Omba ingi andani ukaeze kuomba. Get in with your God. Ingi andani kabisa kwa vilevu kaweze kuomba. For the church. Omba kabisa pigania kanisa lako. Fight for your destiny. Pigania hatima yako. Fight for the flock that God has given to you. Pigania kundi ambalo bwana mekupatia. Right now, wakati hu, Father, we thank you. Baba tuna kushukuru for giving us an assignment. Kutopatia wakati hu, for you have ordained victory for us. Ume tuandalia ushindi. You are causing us to overcome the enemy. Ume tufanya tu kazinde. And this is the victory that you have given to us. Mundi ya ushindi mbomo tupatia. Even our faith, hata imani yetu. This is the victory that you have given to us. Mundi ya ushindi mbomo tupatia. Even our faith. Ata imani yetu. Keep on moving. Keep on praying. Omba kabisa ingi andani ukaombe. Move deeper. Move deeper. Where are you are? Ukaombe kabisa. All over this place. Kila mahali. Stand strong in your prayer. Anza kuomba. Rusha, rusha, rusha kabisa. Holy Spirit of God. Rom takatifu wa bwana. You are raising up a standard. Unainu wangu. Against our enemy. Didi ya adui yetu. Against our adversary. Didi ya adui zetu. Today. Siku ya. We lay the Holy Spirit. To raise up a new level, a new level of prayer, a new level of understanding your word. Oh yes, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for breathing on us, breathing on the church, breathing on your servants. No defeat. Yes, not defeat. Hakuna kushindwa. No failure. Hakuna kushindwa. No backsliding. Hakuna kurudi nyuma. No losing heart. Hakuna kufa moyo. You are giving us strength. Unpatia nguvu. For they that wait up.
upon you yeah. shall renew their strength. I speak strength in the church. I speak strength in the servants of God. Today, come on, somebody's praying all over this place. You are praying for your church. You are praying for your pastors. You are praying for your family. You are praying for your city. You are praying for your community. You are praying for your nation. This is revival time. What of Oh my God, my God, oh, my Baba, God. Baba Yango. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the we are overcoming the world because this is the victory that overcomes the world. Even our faith, the overcoming faith. Imani ya kushinda failing faith Imani ya kufuliza in the name of Jesus jina la Yesu the church is praying kanisa linaomba all the servants of God are praying mwisho wote wanaomba Lord we say thank you Asante baba thank you for infusing us Asante kutuelimisha oh you are positioning us to walk in your victory in the name of Jesus oh keep on moving keep on moving keep on moving keep the fire burning healing is coming to you hallelujah hallelujah praise the name of Jesus hallelujah hallelujah oh Jesus oh yes Oh, in Jesus name we pray in Jesus might name we pray hallelujah hallelujah now watch this look what me men and women of God that does not mean we don't need miracles we don't need signs and wonders because it is the confirmation Ni, of the word. It's the, it's the, confirmation. Ni, it's the confirmation of the word. Because Jesus said, Yesu alisema, and these signs hizi, and these signs hizi, shall follow fata, them that believe. Oh my God, Shafa, you a believer, you ordained for the signs to follow you. Hallelujah. And Jesus said, you shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. You ordained for this. You are, you are ordained for this. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Isaiah he says, behold I, Mimi, and the children that God has now, given me are for signs and wonders. Mama, mama, mama. Hallelujah. Don't let the devil take what is ours. It is our high season to lay hands on the sick, cast out devils. Mama, Take this time right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Declare Tangaza. your position in Christ and go those things that be not as though they are. Signs and, and wonders are for you. you. Come on, raise up your hand. Do it now. Do oh, it now. now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. My God, my God, my God. Call upon 
your signs to be manifested. Signs and the oneness to follow you. The confirmation of the gospel. My Jesus. Oh, yes, Oh, Shara Jesus. I call the signs and the wonders ordained for this ministry, ordained for believers, the casting out of devils and the operation of demon spirits in the name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, let there be signs and wonders, let there be miracles, let there be supernatural in the church through the hands of believers through the hands of believers there shall be signs and wonders there shall be signs and wonders in the name of Jesus Lord we thank you for the confirmation of your word Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Asante, yes. Come on, put your hand together and bless the name of Jesus. Praise the name. Come on. I say, praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I say, Hallelujah. Say, Hallelujah. Children of God and servants of God. When the world is becoming corrupt, you will not be corrupt. Why? We are kept by the power of God. We are kept by the power of God. You know, remember the conversation of Elijah? They have killed the prophets. I'm the only one remaining. Look at how God can preserve and keep. He, he, he told Elijah. Thousand have never been corrupted in Ugoma, in Kenya, in Africa. They are pastors, they are ministers. Put your hands together and bless the name of Jesus.